service bring. Count me with the ransom in his praises sing. Count me. How about you? Count me. When you count on those who are saved by grace, count me. Can we count on you? Amen. Father in heaven, I pray, God, that you'll bless our service tonight. We're certainly thankful for all things. You said give thanks in all things. This is the will of God. Lord, we want to be counted in as one of the saved, one of that have been sold out to God, one of that's going to receive a crown of righteousness. We pray, God, that you will bless now our message tonight in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 All right. You may be seated. Well, God deliver thee, and God deliver. I'm glad that God delivers us today from all those discouragement, those trials that we go through. We have a God that loves us. We have a God that's lavishing us. We have a God that just that wants to be our Lord if we'll allow him to be. Amen. So tonight, you are on the winning side, so turn with me to page 851. You can remain seated tonight, 851, ready? Once lived in my sin, had no hope nor joy within, and my soul Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. From the straight and narrow way, I was drifting every day. I'm on the winning side Out in sin No more will I abide I've enlisted in the fight For the cause of truth and right Praise the Lord I'm on the winning side I will never have a fear For my Lord is ever near I gave him full control.
say, yes, I'm on the winning side. How about you? I'll the war of I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. All righty. Isn't God good? You know it, folks, all the time. Turn with me and let's all stand. Psalms, Psalms number one. Psalms number one. Tonight, following our message tonight, we'll have our uh, prayer time for our church family. And um, <clears throat> so we'll be taking the prayer request. It won't be on the uh, YouTube or the Facebook, the prayer request time, minimizing the time for the service and so forth and keeping our prayer and our prayer family together, our church, and uh, we appreciate those that are joining in in prayer and praying for the service also, and that are joining us tonight. If you're listening by the YouTube or the Facebook uh, during out this week, we pray God will bless you, and that you'll take heed to the message. I'm preaching a message tonight called The Path of Glory or The Path of Gloom. It's a choice. Didn't Joshua say, choose you this day whom you'll serve? You'll choose either the glorious side or the gloom side. And I trust you're on the winning side. Amen? Go on the straight and narrow path. In Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 to 6, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the, the chaff uh, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Father in heaven, Lord, I'm so thankful that we are on the winning side. Lord, I'm so thankful that I could look back when I was 20 years old and I got from the wrong side to the winning side. I had victory in Jesus by trusting that the Lord is my Savior, and I thank you for that. God, I pray you bless every need of the hour tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. It's certainly good to be in the house of the Lord tonight, amen? And on a Sunday night, a lot of people are maybe resting back, kicking back, and relaxing, getting ready perhaps for, for work tomorrow. But I'm so glad that the saints that are here tonight, you'll hear this message on the path of glory or the path of gloom. And tonight, as we go into the book of Psalms tonight, we realize how beautiful the book of Psalms is. How beautiful and how it's filled with the writings of many different authors, by the way. Uh, David, the, the king of Israel, King Hezekiah, uh, during the days of the Assyrian invasion, he wrote Psalms. Uh, Asap, the head musician and choir director. How about the sons of Korah? Solomon, Heman, <coughs> Ezraite, Moses also. Some are some are dressed of the chief magician. And this is the psalms that are titled the Ajet Shahar, and that is the day dawn in Psalms 21 and 22. Read those psalms about the Lord Jesus Christ. The psalms of meditation, the psalms of meditation, Mascal, understanding or teaching, and then Micham, the, uh, the engraving of Selah, Selah, and that means let's pause and let's lift this up and let's take time to meditate on what we have just read. The Psalms are just filled with many, many prophecies anticipating even the, the Lord Jesus Christ and the coming of the Christ and the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and his life himself and his character were all seen in the book of Psalms. His death, his burial, his resurrection, that Jesus Christ would be not left in the grave, amen, that he too would be resurrected. Beautiful Psalms were quoted by the Lord Jesus Christ, they were quoted by Peter, they were quoted by Paul, and the Psalms are just rich, they're filled with rich experiences that are relevant, not only in those days, but are relevant today. All God's people said? 
How many times you sit up at night? How many times maybe you sit in a chair and you sit there and you start reading the book of Psalms and so forth, and uh, you start reading those that are comforted? Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditations. Hearken unto me, Psalms number 5. In, the, in my thy voice, my voice shall thou hear in the morning. In the morning, O Lord, while I, while I speak unto thee, I will direct my prayer unto thee, and I will look up to you. How many times in the early hours of the morning that you've spent talking to God Almighty? How many times? Uh, you know what? I realize I don't have my microphone on me tonight. I'm going to have to stay closer to, my, to the microphone. I'm sorry about that. Amen? All right, I realize that. But the very fact is the Psalms are so rich. The Psalms are so rich tonight, and we realize how, how blessed it is to, to have the riches of the Word of God right in front of you. You see, we realize in, in chapter 1 here, we see the saint and the sinner. We just read about the godly man. He verses the godless man, the ungodly man. In Psalms 1, there has been no author. Do you notice? Look at the top. You see Psalms 1 and Psalms 2. Do you see any authors? You don't see any authors described or, or designated. It's called an orphan psalm. An orphan psalm. Did you know that? An orphan psalm. The first two psalms have been authors have been unclaimed and so forth. Now, don't write in and put your name in there, amen. It wasn't you who wrote it, amen. You weren't around in those days, amen. You can't claim it, amen. They're called the orphan psalms because it, didn't have a, it doesn't have the origination of an author that has written it, the very psalm. But the psalmist has wrote with such, with such insight, understanding, and knowing the difference between an ungodly man and a godly man. And I think King Solomon knew that. And, of course, David knew that by experience of being godly and being ungodly, being backslidden, being in touch with God. What I like about David, he was a man after God's heart. What do I mean by that? He was a man that had a heart. Watch this. He had a heart that was directed to repentance and forgiveness and filled with compassion. That's what I like about David in that area because when, when he did wrong, he made it right with God. And that's what we need to do today, amen? When you do something wrong, you make it right. Well, these first two psalms, as we see these songs there, we're told to meditate on them. The first thing I want to show you or point out in these first few verses about the ungodly man. The only God mean man's gloom uh, versus the godly man's glory. It's a beautiful chapter as it deals with this. Blessed is the man. Happy is the man. Happy is the man that, what? Walk it not. not. Read it with me. Walk it not of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scorn. Happy is the man. Happy is the man, the blessed man. You know the word blessed is plural there? Did you notice that rendering not singular, but, but actually is plural? We realize that it's plural and referring to more than, than one blessing, but many, many blessings, many blessings. And this is God pouring out his blessings about every man that is godly. We're going to see about the, uh, the, the, the godly man's path, the godly man's path. Notice Notice when he starts this off, blesses the man that not. Now, wait, when you see a not, that's a negative, isn't it? It's a negative. But God uses a negative to prove a positive. Notice the negative to drive the person to be positive. Blessed is the man that walketh not. That's the negative, but it produces a positive. Watch this. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the council of the ungodly. Oh my, you study the scriptures. I, I looked it up this afternoon. Once again, I looked up some scriptures and I thought about some ungodly men. One stood out, a uh, lot. Lot should have learned a lesson, amen? He should have learned a lesson, not the fellowship, not the hobnob with the ungodly. You know, I put this down. I put hobnobbing with the old friends of the past that are ungodly, doing drugs, Selling dope, prostitution, gambling, wicked life living, people will only draw you back to your old self. This is why when you get saved, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become what, folks? New. So you know what? You don't go back to the old crowd. Amen? You just don't do what you used to do. 
Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. Because the Holy Spirit now is inside you. It's the Holy Spirit that now convicts you. You just can't do what you used to do. You can't think the way you used to think. You can't go to the places you used to go. You just can't have the, this type of old lifestyle because the Holy Spirit itself in your heart will start knocking on your door of your heart and say, this is not where you belong. Have you ever been there? I can tell you, when I first got saved, amen, God bless you. When I first got saved, there was things my old nature wanted me to lean me back to. Lean me back to. Go back to your old ways, amen. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit was there to convict me because he now lives in me since I've been saved, redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is my friend inside me, and he's not going to let me do it and give me a clear conscience about it. And all God's people said, amen. amen. So don't blame others for you going back to doing your old lifestyle. Can I get amen? Because it's just, it's just a big fat lie, and the devil is the author of fat lies. Amen? You tell him I said so. Amen. amen. <laughs> let's, choose, let's choose the path. Let's not choose the path of gloom, but the, the, choose the, the, the path of glory. Amen? I mean, we, we look at the very scriptures, and Lot, he lost his influence. This is a sad story. If you study the story of Lot, the reason why I chose Lot is because he really went back. He had the best influence. He had a great uncle, Uncle Abraham. And he had a great influence. And he had a choice, you see, because life is filled with choices. And in, in Genesis chapter 13, uh, commencing with verse number 8, it says this, And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife. There was strife between Lot's herdsmen and Abraham's herdsmen. There was so many cattle, so much strife in, in between them. He says, I pray thee between me and thee, Abraham saying, he said, between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, for we're brethren, we're, we're family. Let's not fight as a family. Family should not fight, amen? Is not the whole land before thee separate? Thy, is not the whole land before thee? That was the question mark. And he says, separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou wilt depart to the right, then I'll go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered. Watch this. Well watered everywhere before the Lord. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zorah. This land was so beautiful before God destroyed it, the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. Let me tell you, sin is always deceptive, amen? Sin always looks good on the surface, but below it, it's filled with rottenness. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves, the one from the other. Now, we realize that Lot had to make a choice, but he made a choice. He made a choice with his sight. He made his choice with his feelings, and he made a bad choice in his life because in the land, the Bible says it was filled with sodomites and so forth, and let me tell you something. He himself was vexed. He was vexed with the crowd of people that he was surrounded with. You know, <clears throat> How do I know that? Because when I read the very scriptures, I read the scripture in 2 Peter chapter 2, the Bible says this, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. God talks about judgment here. And delivered just Lot, vexed, with the filthy conversation of the wicked. You know what happens when you're around people that are filthy? You'll pick up their filthy language. Can I get an amen? amen. That's why the Bible says that it is to stay away from the man that's the forward man, the evil man, the, the man that speaks uh, violently, viciously, in anger. Amen. Why? Lest you become like them. For that righteous man, he's referring to Lot, Dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. In other, well, in other words, what he did is he, 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 he walked in the counsel of the ungodly. 
He stood in the council of the ungodly, and he sat down in fellowship with them. And you know what? It vexed his soul in his heart. His heart was torn apart. Let me tell you something. This ungodly man, he made a, he made a choice. And every choice that you make, you're either going to make it a good choice or a bad choice. How do we know the difference? Because Abraham, his, his uncle, makes the right choice. One's making a choice on the path of gloom. The other one's making a choice on the path of glory. It says here in Genesis 13, And the Lord said unto Abraham, After that lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward and southward. Look north, look to the south, look to the east, look at the west. He said, I will make thy seed, the nation of Israel, as a dust of the earth, so that it can, uh, so if a man can number the dust of the earth, what, could you imagine the dust of the earth? How much dust there's in the air? Then shall thy seed be multiplied. God gave Abraham a, a covenant promise. He said, look to the east, look to the, to the west, look to the north, look to the, look to the south, and wherever you see, all this land is going to be your land. Arise, walk through the land and the length of it, and walk the breadth of it. And I will give it unto thee. And Abraham removed the, his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in uh, Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Why? He's going to give praise to God Almighty. Let me tell you something. Two different men. Two different men. And they're both, let me, they're both, now it's believed that Lot was saved. But let me tell you something. Saved people could be backslidden. Can I get an Amen. Saved people could go back to their old ways, amen? It's not that they lost their salvation. They will lose their crowns at, at the judgment seat of Christ. Can you turn this one on, John? They will lose their crowns at the judgment seat of Christ. Because why? Because they've turned from their, they've turned, they've turned and turned back to, they've turned from God and turned back to their wicked ways. They shortened themselves. They shortened their blessings. It's like God's got all these blessings in store for them, and lo and behold, what happens? What happens? They go back to this old wicked life of doing those old things and, and, and this old wicked lifestyle, and guess what? Before you know it, their life has come to an end. A man's life, three score and, and, and ten, 70 years. Oh, Lord, please, don't let it just be 70 years. That's only another year to go, amen? <laughs> Let's have more mercy. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that the people are living longer today. Right, Brother Ed? Right, Brother John? Amen? Because if there's three score and ten, honey, I just got one more year. Amen? <laughs> 365 days. Bink, the clock is done. I'm done. Amen? Next man up to bat. Boom. Get another preacher there. Amen? Well, I hope that's not the case. Amen? Appointed unto man wants to die, and after this, the what, folks? The judgment. We're all going to be judged. Amen? Don't blame other people for your sin. Don't blame other people for your faults. Own up to it. It's the lustful flesh, the lustful nature that we have to be under control. The ungodly man has a path that will lead to doom and destruction. You're going to see that in the tail end of this message. But I like the godly man because he's happy. He's a happy man. He's happy because he avoids places that he should not go. Amen? What's the negative side of it? It's a negative side of it. You know, this man we read in the scriptures says he doesn't walk. He, 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 the ungodly man, he doesn't, uh, uh, the, um, nor stand, nor stand. And uh, he doesn't walk, he doesn't stand, he doesn't sit. Why? He's made a choice to be separated. The key verse there is 13.9 where it says they separated themselves. We need to be separated. This is why I avoid the beaches. I guard my lustful thoughts inside. Uh, this is why I avoid smoking to protect my health. I avoid the drinking, amen, to destroy my body. I avoid the mix, the dancing and so forth. Not why, because there are senses that I have that are triggers and so forth. And I don't want to go with those triggers to go back to the old way. I want to keep my mind as pure as I possibly can. This is the type of gospel that people don't like to hear. Am I right, brother? Brother Ed, amen. This is the old-fashioned gospel, amen. Preached at Beach Fellowship Baptist Church. Amen. The old faith, the old gospel, and preaching from the King James Bible. So we, we don't have to cover it up. We don't have to be. Now, we're not proud and we're not being arrogant. We're just being truthful. Amen. 
The word of God is here right in this book. Amen? So what happens? You avoid the marijuana that was big in the 60s and the 70s and 80s and is big today. Probably bigger now today than it was ever because it became legalized. And all God's people said what? Amen, amen. Uh, isn't it amazing? We can, church, we can close down the church. Close the church. But keep the marijuana joints open. Amen. Close the church. Keep the liquor stores open. Close the church. Amen. You can do all this, but yet close the house of God. This should never, never, never happen again. Amen. Unless the church decides not to have an evening service or a Sunday service, to something that's going on that they decide as a governing body of the church. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, you avoid, you avoid the marijuana, you avoid the drugs, the cocaine, the heroin, met all these different things. Why? You're a new creature in Christ and old things are passed away. Behold, all things become what? New. new. So the happy man is a separated man. Amen. Separated. One wife, one life. Happy wife, happy life. Amen. I love it. Amen. I love it. Amen. <laughs> A happy man is a separated man. Notice the psalmist begins with the negative. Now, if I was going to give you instruction, would I begin with a negative? I'd begin with a positive. I said, son, this is what you need to do. And I'd give you all the things to do instead of things not to do. But this psalmist reverses it and starts off with negatives. So you can turn it to a positive, how you can become happy. You, you don't go back to the old crowd. You don't sit with them. You don't stand with them. You don't stand with them. You don't walk with them. And, and uh, you're just the seed of the scornful. The people that detest there is a God. There is a God that created heaven and earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen? The happy man is marked by the things he does not do. You got it? A happy man is happy because there's things that he does not do. The places he does not go, the books he does not read, the movies that he does not watch. And I'm not against all these movies, but there are movies that you shouldn't watch. Can you hear amen? And the company that he does not keep, and surely this sounds strange, doesn't it? But it's not. It's what the Bible recipe is for the blessed is the happy is the man that doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in, in, the, in the way of the sinners, nor sit it in the seat of the scornful. Now, this means you do, not, you do no longer gamble at the track. It's, incidentally, I've had many, many funerals, and one funeral stood out. So I asked the young girl, I said, could you tell me something about your dad so I could go ahead and in this eulogy, in this presentation, I could say some kind words? And she says, I've got nothing kind to say. Oh, that set me back. He was a cruel man. He starved us. Oh, this is going to be interesting to tell you this about your dad. Amen. He was an uncruel, he was a cruel man, and he starved us. This doesn't sound like I'm going to console anybody out there. Amen. And he said he spent all his money at Belmoral Racetrack and at the uh, uh, May, what was it? May, what is it? Maywood, Maywood. Some of you folks have been there, huh? No, Maywood. <laughs> Maywood, amen. <laughs> I couldn't remember. Donna, I heard you say Maywood too. Amen. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. But the very fact is, you know, the fact is, um, I said, well, let me just ask your, your brother. I asked the son, the brother. He said, Dad hurt everybody, and that was rotten to Mom. Oh, this is going to be a real nice funeral. That's all I got to say, amen? I am tongue-tied. I don't know what to say up here, amen? And I had to, you know what I said? Let me tell you about a God who loves you. Let me tell you a story about God the Father who sent the Son. This is the only story I can give them, the story of truth, because what? Truth matters, amen? And I told a story about Jesus. And that's the best story I could tell. And people got saved at the end of the funeral. Amen? But what if the dad would have been a godly dad? 
What do we say? My dad was fabulous. My dad was thoughtful. My dad was there for me all the time. My dad picked me up from school. My dad just taught me so many things. My dad, my dad, my dad, my dad, and all the things that daddy did. Wouldn't that have been a lot easier? Amen? Other than saying he was rotten, other than saying he spent all the money, he hurt us, we starved, and my mom just was, was cruelly beaten. Oh, my. I don't need to hear all this. Amen? <laughs> I had one fellow come up to me at the funeral. He put his finger up my nose. He said, don't say anything good about that guy. You didn't know him the way I know him. And I pulled his finger away from my nose. I said, would you please go sit down over there? I said, I'm only going to tell you what I know about him. And I didn't know much, but I knew I led him to Christ at the nursing home. And that's the only story I can tell, how he trusted Jesus as the latter day of his life, amen, and that he's in heaven, and you too could go to heaven today. Let's put aside all those grudges that you have, amen? And um, <clears throat> let's bury those grudges, amen? And instead of trying to keep them alive and keep digging them back up, amen? There's room at the cross for forgiveness. Paul talked about it a little bit this morning. Well, you know what? There's things that you just give up. There's things that you do. You see, if you do not steal, you do not have to feel guilty. Can I get amen about theft? So you're happy. If you do not lie... You do not have to feel like a liar because you're happy, amen? If you do not gamble, you don't have to feel bad about losing money and spending the grocery money because you don't do it. If you do not do drugs, you, do not, uh, you will not destroy your health. So guess what? You're happy. You see, uh, we realize there's many blessings that God has for the, for the child of God. We realize that the negatives bring a, about the positives. So God begins with a with a, with this. Um, with, he wants to bring out a positive thought, but he arrives it by starting off with a negative. By these are the things that you don't do, and you'll be blessed. Does that make sense? And um, <clears throat> uh, don't walk with the ungodly. Don't listen to them. Don't linger with them. Don't stand with them. God said to nor stand in the way of the sinners. Why? Because you'll fall flat on your face. Abraham told a, a little lie, unfortunately, about his wife. And uh, guess what? He said that Sarah is my sister, but you know what? He was protecting her, he was protecting himself, and she was a half-sister. And you know what? It, it reaped his reputation. It got hurt there. Peter stood in the way of the sinners when, at the campfire. And what did he do? He denied Jesus. You know, I can give you point after point of men that were good, but men that did evil and paid a price. But let me tell you something. The men that did bad and made it right with God, let me tell you something. They're no different than you and different than me. Can I get an amen? Because we'll all fall flat on our face when we yield to our flesh. Amen? All right. You don't even laugh with the scornful. Or sit, sit with them, a chair of the scornful. And uh, I think about how many college professors have destroyed the hopes of young Bible students by discrediting the word of God. That this is not the inspired, inerrant word of God. That it's filled with errors. And kids that have gone to school that have worked, they have been under good counsel, good preaching, and then they hear a professor deny the inspiration. <clears throat> The infallibility, the canonicity of the Word of God. Telling that this book is filled, it's just a myth and folklore and superstitious. Jeff brought out the word remus, which are the scriptures, the Word of God. God gave us this book. God gave us the, Jesus was the, the spoken word and we have the written word. Amen. It's pure. It's preserved. Read the scriptures. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God will not. It'll live forever. Amen. Let me tell you something. The word of God. How precious. Well, let me move on to this. We see the ungodly man. <clears throat> we see the ungodly man, his, his path. We see, the, uh, we see the godly man in verse number two, his pleasure. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. This is in, in the word of God. And in his law that he meditate day and night. Delighting in the law of the word. He is satisfied with the word of God. 
Delight thyself, Psalms 37, 4. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your what? Your heart, amen? Boy, I tell you, when I first got saved, I just fell in love with the Lord, amen? I mean, the Bible stories, I would sit and I'd read those little children of mine. I'd read Jessica. I would read her the Bible. I was 20 years old. And you know what kind of Bible I'd use? I'd use, a, Doris, I'd use a little storybook Bible. Telling the stories about creation. Telling the stories about uh, Exodus. <clears throat> telling the story of the Tower of Babel. All these different stories of, uh, of, of, of David and Goliath. I would read those stories. You say, Pastor, but let me tell you, I would read those stories because I was learning the stories. Amen? I was learning the Bible. It's sad to be raised up and go to, to, go, to be raised up and never go to church and bring your Bible. Amen? How sad that is. And you realize that when I got saved, something got real in my heart. And I started memorizing the word of God. John, I started studying the word of John. Uh, I, I, the word of God. And I showed John the study master outlines. Right, John? All the ones I had memorized on doctrines. And let me tell you something. I put the word of God. Why? Because it was now my delight. It was my appetite. What I wanted to eat. Amen? What I was drawn to is studying the word of God. And the study to show thyself approve the workman unto God who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We realize, we realize you need to have an affection for the word of God. His delight is in the law. Let me tell you something. Now, how many have a delight to eat some pork chops? Do you anybody pork chop lovers out there? Yeah. We have a few. Bethany made pork chops I never seen in my whole life today. And it was a real treat. And with the pork chops came a sweet potato from my sweetie pie and a sweet potato from Beth and the pork chop and salad. I made the salad. Am I right? And let me tell you something. We had tomahawk pork chops. Who knows what a tomahawk pork chop is? Beth does. It's got a big old bone on it, John, about this big. It curves around and the pork chop is shaped like this. It looks like a tomahawk. Amen. I never had it. You eat it, Donna, you eat it by holding the handle of the bone. And when I put my choppers into it, let me tell you, it was so delicious and so moist. I said, well, how did you make these? She barbecued them. And they were so, so delicious. Amen. And we each had one big one like that. And let me tell you something. That raised my appetite. I said, let's go back to that Bob's, what was it called? Bob's Locker. Bob's Butcher in, in Dyer. I said, let's go buy some more tomahawks. Amen. Now I'm a tomahawk. I'm a tomahawk man. Amen. <clears throat> Can't say that too much because they'll be taking the name tomahawk off the pork shop. <laughs> Amen. Pretty soon. You never know. The attention is the word of God. It gets your attention and it needs to get your attention. Today we're distracted. I wanted to say, John, we're distracted by sports, but we can't even see the sports on the TV no more. Right? And the uh, movies and hobbies and contests and all these different things. Uh, but I like what the Bible says. In the law, in the law, doth he meditate. And that is to bring it up and ruminate, just like the, a cow does. And he chews the curve. Puts it out four stomachs. Amen. Brings it up. Brings it back. This stomach, that stomach, this stomach. Brings it up to, to, till it's gone. Amen. <laughs> we'll leave it there. Amen. And the very fact is the godly man has a lot of pressure, pleasure. The ungodly man is on a path of, of nothing but, what, but uh, gloom and doom. But the godly man has a, a, a path of pleasure, a path that he wants to just delight himself in the word of God. The godly man, guess what happens? He prospers, and he shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doth shall prosper. I remember years ago, I remember years ago, I was with my mom, and we were in California, and we were walking by, and these, these palm trees, and let me tell you something, I never seen palm trees grow so tall, so tall, so tall. I kept looking up at those palm trees, and I said, how are they growing so tall? And you know what? It be, and they were surrounded at, with a good amount of concrete about them. But they had enough area 
that was open and they must have been deep rooted so deep into that soil into the water that was feeding them and the ocean wasn't far away but they were flourishing flourishing and it just told me if we'll just stay connected like the science says we'll connect with the lord god we are going to flourish amen be like the palm tree by the river john Philip said it this meditation in the scripture releases the river of god's spirit in that our lives are refreshed and revitalized. So the more you're in the word of God, the more revitalized. Seven things mark the man who is rooted uh, in the river. Watch this. Number one, his prominence. He's like a tree, a tree that's well recognized. That's his prominence. His permanence. He is like a tree that is planted. Unlike the grass that what? withers away the tree is planted okay his position he is planted by the water that means when drought comes he's still tapped into the vein we need to be tapped in when there's drought in your life when there's hard times in your life you need to stay steadfast unmovable knowing your labor is not in vain if thou faint in the day of adversity thy strength is small you need to cling to the word of god stay rooted stay rooted in the word of god Watch this, his productivity, he bringeth forth fruit. Then the God said, we to bear. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you that you would go forth and bear what? Much fruit. God wants you to bear much fruit, amen? Be fruit bearers, amen? Watch this, his prosperity in his season, in his, his, his uh, I said productivity, we got that, bearing the fruit, his, uh, uh, his uh, prosperity. Uh, that's not right here. In his right season, amen? Propriety, it is. Propriety is what I'm trying to say. Propriety. In his season, amen? You know, we all go through seasons of life, amen? And, and I, I have learned that over many years as my Christian life. We've had some hard times. And I said, Lord, I know this is only going to be for a season. A season usually lasts a few months. Sometimes it goes to extend it. Sometimes maybe it's six months. But I said, in this too shall come to pass. So you're dealing with an ailment, you're dealing with hurts, you're dealing with pains and things that came your way, um, you know, being hurt, hurting your back and so forth, pulling these muscles out, knocking your vertebrae out of whack and so forth. It's painful, it's painful, but it too shall come to pass. It'll be for a season, amen? If you have a heart condition, it's going to be for a season, otherwise you're going home, amen? <laughs> If you're saved, you won't have to worry about your heart condition, amen? But this too shall come to pass. I remember some countless nights just staying up with anxiety and, and hurting and pain and, and, and agonizing and hurting, especially with the heart condition. But I remember how God gave the relief as I read the scriptures, read the word of God, because I meditated on it. And let me tell you something, I have found that prayer is the best thing for insomnia. And all God's people said, start praying, amen, start praying, amen. And you'll wind up going to sleep, I guarantee you, because there's so much peace in prayer. Um, you'll find this, if you're planted by the river of water, amen, not only is there is there's prominence, there's permanence, there's position, there's productivity, there's proprietary, there's... Uh, perpetuity his leaf uh, will not wither amen then there's um, uh, prosperity whatsoever he doth he's going to prosper so what happens what happens when you get saved and you start living right choosing the right path going the right direction going to church reading your bible memorizing the word of god studying the word of god your life begins to change you begin to transform all of a sudden, you've got the blessings of God from heaven being upon you, and your life begins to change. And guess what? Your children begin to change, and they're following Christ as you're following the Lord. Amen? Your children are, uh, are be, they're imitators of you. Amen? You're doing good. They're going to do good. You're doing bad. They're going to do bad. You're swearing, losing your temper. They're going to swear and lose their temper. It's all part of it. Kids follow they follow. This is why we have to be an example to everybody, especially to your family. What happens? You start growing in grace, and your family begins to grow, grow, grow together. Uh, his family and his business will be blessed. His marriage will be blessed. 
his personal life would be best blessed. It's all because this is what God has in store for the godly man. The godly man stays on the right path. He does not listen to the ungodly. He does not linger with the sinful man. He does not even laugh with the scornful. The godly man has a pleasure. He has an affection for the word of God. He has an attention to the word of God. The godly man prospers. Let me conclude with verses 4 to 6. The ungodly are not so. They are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now, the first thing I see here about the ungodly man, the godless man, he is driven away. The unsaved person is unpredictable. Can I get an amen? You can't predict. You can't. The Bible says not to put your confidence in man. So the unsaved man is an unpredictable man. The unsaved woman is an unpredictable. The unsaved child is unpredictable. You may have children. You may have friends. You may have cousins, relatives that they're unsaved, and you can't always count on them. Am I right, Kurt? And if they say they're going to do it, you expect them to do it, and they don't do it. Then you realize the Bible is true. Put your faith not in the conf put your confidence. <clears throat> don't put your faith in the confidence of man, especially an ungodly man. The unsaved person is unpredictable. The unsaved person is unreliable. And the unsaved person is usually self-centered. It's all about who? Pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit before the what? Fall. So, he is driven away. He's motivated by his own fleshly desires. How much money can I make? What can I do? He wants to be the captain of his soul. Isn't that interesting? And he will fall to his flesh. He is relentlessly driven by S-I-N. And what does that spell? Sin. He is doomed in verse number 5. The sinner is totally doomed. As a matter of fact, the Bible says the books are going to be open. And there's a set of books, here's a set of books of every person that was born, and here's a set of books that every person that was born again is called, Paul's called the book of life. And your name somewhere along the line has to be written. Paul K. has got to go from this book to this book, which is the book of life. Whosoever is not found written in the Lamb's book of life is cast into the lake of fire, where the fire and brimstone, and will burn for eternity. The person that are born, I was born, on May 15, 1951, and on August 7, 1971, I was reborn. So my name was taken from this book and now put into this book, which is the book of life. And that, my dear friend, is found in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 20, where the, the, the men, all men, they stood before God and the books were open. And I saw the dead, the small, the great stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things were written in the books according to their works, what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead and were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And now they were all judged. These are unsaved people. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. And whosoever is not found written in what? The book of life. Those who have been born again, regenerated, accepted Jesus Christ by faith. Like Paul Sprague said, acknowledge that you're a sinner. Believe only one person can forgive you of your sin. Confess your sin to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Those who can believe, receive, repent of their sin, trust Jesus as their Savior. Their name is written in the book of life. It says, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Your name must be written in the book of life, amen? Or you will be cast into a lake of fire. See, the ungodly man, he's driven away by his sin. He's doomed, uh, according to verse number five. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. He is damned, in verse number 6, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly will perish. He's damned the eternal damnation. So we have two paths to choose. 
the one way of glory and the other way of gloom. Jesus put it this way, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Matthew says that uh, about the different gates, how the, the, the road of destruction is very broad, but the road that the narrow plan of salvation is very narrow. It's a small gate. It's a smaller opening. Amen? Few there be that find it when you read Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. So tonight it's choose the road. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Amen? Choose the road. Choose the path of glory or choose the path of gloom. And the choice is our choice tonight. Now those that are here tonight, you're saved. Aren't you glad you made the right choice? Bethy picked out the music on the winning side. And Bethy, you did a good job. She didn't know what I was going to preach about. And uh, I'm thankful. We're going to sing tonight, page 857. Miss Beth is filling in for uh, Rebecca. And we're hoping the painters will be back very soon. Amen. And uh, we certainly miss them. And we miss all that are not feeling well. And tonight we'll be taking prayer requests. And Donna, you're welcome to, of course, stay on and join us. And um, we're going to be closing off on our YouTube and Facebook, page 857. Let's all stand. I love you, Lord. You love him tonight. Let's sing out. that God hears and angels rejoice is when a sinner's on his knees and repenting of your sin. Let's keep our hearts right with God. Many need to be saved. Many need to um, just be closer to God. And if you'll draw nigh unto him, he'll draw nigh unto you. Humble yourself, therefore, unto the Lord. Resist the devil. Submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Father, I pray, Lord, that we'll draw close to you We'll realize tonight we all make a choice, the path of glory or the path of gloom. Lord, let us stay on the right path for your honor and your glory in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.